Welcome to Dynamis Hub. Dynamis Hub is an apostolic movement to take over the media sphere of influence and set men on fire for God. We bring to you anointed messages, power-packed articles, prophetic chants, soaking worship, and lots more. Connect with us with Dynamis Hub via all social media platforms. Thank you. Please lift your hands and pray. Praise the Please worship God. Please sit 
of Jesus. Hey, you are the light in the darkness, my God. Sing we make a we make a we make a we make a miracle of the promise. You are the light in the darkness. Sing we make a we make a we make a we make a miracle of promise. You are the light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. One more time. Sing we make a we make a miracle of promise. You are the light in the darkness, my God. You rose from the dead. You are the mighty God. Eila to be true. You are the glorious Alagbara. Yeah, you are the mighty God. Eila to be Of your glory, ah, no man can know the depth of your love. Oh. No man can know the extent of your power. Ah, no man can see the end of your grace. Oh, sing as far as far as the heavens stand. Stand above the earth. Ah, you are exalted. He's the one we have come to celebrate. Unlimited God. As far as the heavens stand. Hey, stand above the earth. You are exalted. Unlimited. You are exalted. 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 Unlimited God. The grave could not hold you captive. Hey, great and mighty God. He who was, who is, and who is to come. You are. You are exalted. You are praise Yahweh. For you, Yahweh, sing the lifting of my holy hands is unto you, is unto you, Yahweh. Hello, Madonai, ah, ah, hello, hello, Elohim Adonai ah, Elohim Elohim Adonai Elohim Adonai For your name is holy Can we pray in the spirit? Is only just pray the spirit, Lord. Your name is holy, Lord. For your name is holy, is holy. Hey, your name is holy, Lord. For your name, concentrate. Marata kada bila da ba de zoli shada ba da ba da da na mani esadi adi olagash iya ne mi zoli la for your name is holy is holy ashata ba kosa prate can we pray in the spirit? This is a place. Pray in the spirit. Scripture says, 
not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, maintaining heat to a boiling point, serving the Lord. We are youths on fire for God. We are not lethargic, lukewarm, dizzy, lazy, slothful youths. We are people who press into the will and the purposes of God in our days. We are not confined by the limitations of our environment. We rise from the frustrations and the frustrations, the frustrations that the adversities of life have decided to keep us. We rise by the wisdom and the power of the Spirit. We are seated with Him in heavenly places, far above principalities and powers, rulers and might, dominion and every name that is named both is in this world and in the world to come. Just pray in the Spirit. Mando rata gabasha, likete zibaroja bretia. Mambre to go si katabado shabada balas. I want to draw, draw. Express your hunger. Draw from you again. I want to draw. I I I did not come to waste my time. I did not come to mark register. Draw, draw from you again. Yeah, yeah. You are the fountain of life. Unto whom shall we go? We come to draw. Arabasha. Sikatala Bobosha. Yeah. Draw from you again. Yeah, yeah. Please pray. Say, I have come to draw. Sing, I have come to draw, I have come to draw. Baratosa Bracata, Shabatosa Pete, draw, draw from you again. Yeah, yeah. You are mighty and you are true. Break forth, thou spirit of the deep, and with paddles, you are mighty and you are true. Listen. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 scripture says and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and lifted me up upon my feet there is something about the ministry of the holy spirit when he comes to tabernacle within and around a life then you will begin to see possibilities that you have not thought about before for eyes have not seen nor ears had neither has he entered into the heart of any man that which the lord has in store but we know through the ministry of the holy spirit can you cry tonight and say holy spirit I desire an encounter with you. I desire an encounter. Mando kabarata basha brakatosa. Legede shebede rete. Can you pray? And say, Holy Spirit, an encounter. An encounter. An encounter. An encounter. Manta barato shiketea. Maradabasha brata kadabasha. Legete vida borabosa pita. An encounter, Spirit of God. Ayaya shata. There is no other God who lives and never, never dies. There is no, there is no. There is no other God who never 
Ada. Father, thank you because you are alive. You are not dead. You are strong and mighty. Thank you because we have come to celebrate your faithfulness here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Can you wave your hands to the Holy Spirit and say, Thank you, Holy Spirit? Please wave your hands and say, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God. Understand what you are singing. Mm. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. And forever you are God. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Holy Lord. And forever you are God. And forever you are God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, and forever you are God. Bless you, Lord. You are holy. Holy Lord. And forever you are. And forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Holy Lord. And and forever you are God. Hey, 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 hey. And forever you are God. Forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Holy Lord. And forever you are you are calling the dimension of God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Holy other and forever and forever you are God. We bless you, Lord. You are holy. Father, thank you. <laughs> Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Lord, we have come tonight to celebrate the victory of the resurrection. Thank you because you are truly alive in us. Thank you for the power of the gospel. Thank you because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes. Thank you because your word is true. Thank you because as we behold you tonight, you will change us. You will transform us. And you will cause your face to shine upon us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I ask, Father, for as many who are here tonight, let somebody live here with a miracle. Let somebody live here with true transformation. Let understanding come to your people, God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let somebody shout, Hallelujah! Please, um, can you just greet one or two people around you? God bless you. Good evening, everybody. It's such a privilege to be with us this evening. Um, I do not take it for granted that you took time to attend this meeting. I believe that if you are attending this meeting, either for the first or second time, then there is something about your life that God truly wants to do. That means that your life is not ordinary. Your life is not casual. God has a plan. And that plan is what we want to press into. Hallelujah. Um, quickly, I want to appreciate the leadership of this church for allowing us gather together in this place. 
Pastor Femi for you today in absentia. Please can we celebrate God in our pastor's life? We are grateful. Quickly also, I would like to celebrate my elder brother. Please, sir, can you stand up for recognition? Please celebrate. This is my elder brother. You saw him drumming the drum set and the Lord bless you, sir. He's an amazing, amazing. Some of you have heard about him. Lord bless us in Jesus' name. Finally, please, can we celebrate our brethren from Aixwick, it is State University. They came around all the way from another state. Even if it is two minutes, another state is another state. Is that true? The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. What is the subject of our discussion tonight so that we know where we, we are? What are we looking into tonight, please, brethren? The, the gospel. Somebody say the gospel. The gospel. The gospel. There are many teachings in our day and time. All of them look nice, but um, the message that truly brings salvation and transformation to lives is actually the, the gospel. Somebody say the gospel. Paul the Apostle writing to the church at Rome, he said, For I am not ashamed of please let them help us work on okay good thank you for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to how many people everyone that believeth to the jew first and also to the greek so we see that from time immemorial the, 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 from the way God designed man the man himself is naturally destitute of meaning and fulfillment outside his maker the way God designed man is such that without your source you cannot know fulfillment are we together? so the first dilemma that the gospel comes to address because we'll quickly look now at um, what the gospel is not the first dilemma that the gospel actually addresses is the dilemma of reality somebody say reality when you are talking about reality you are defining four things number one origin somebody say origin origin in the sense that every man on earth no matter how hardened you are you want to know where you are coming from is that true at a particular juncture in your life you look and say okay where exactly am i coming from where is my source you know you can't just wake up one morning and you began to you know engage your cognitive reasoning and then you look at yourself you look at your hands you look at your body and say well nothing created me i just jumped from the skies and met myself here so the gospel addresses the question of origin for the bible tells us in the book of genesis that god is the creator of man is that true bible say and god said let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have what now dominion the second question the gospel answers after the after the question of origin is the question of meaning somebody say meaning we are not talking say meaning meaning in the sense that every man also wants to know what he or she has come to do and what he or she will do that will bring true fulfillment to his or her life how many of you want to discover the path to true fulfillment so that is why you see a lot of people with so much money so much cash all right yet you you hear that they committed suicide is that true why because the life of a man does not consist in the abundance of the things that he possesses so that means that irrespective of how much you are able to acquire on earth the gospel is still the only answer to that void of god of his purpose and of his meaning in your life the third question the gospel answers after the question of origin the um, the question of meaning the third question the gospel answers is the question of morality somebody say morality i know this is a teaching so just follow me please say morality there is need to understand the right yardstick to measure right or wrong when God made man, one of the ways man 
differs from every other animal is that man has a will to respond to God or to not respond to God. Somebody say will. It's called the privilege of free will. So when God made Adam and Eve in the garden, he did not force them. He never said, you know what? If you don't, you must eat of this tree. And then he, he tied their hands to the tree, sir. Is that what he did? And tied their waist. And as the uh, fruit were falling down, it was, they were eating. Is that what happened? No. He told them that the day you eat of this particular tree, you shall what? Surely die. So man has a will to choose good or evil. So the gospel also shows us how to choose good and abandon or reject evil. The fourth question the gospel answers. The fourth question the gospel answers is the question of destiny. Somebody say destiny. How many of you have heard the word before destiny? Please raise up your hand. You've heard destiny many times, right? Good. If you were born by somebody, that means that one day you will die. Is that true? Scripture says it is appointed once for a man to what? To die. And after that is what? Is judgment. So every man also wants to know where will I end? I want to know where I stand in the hereafter because I have looked at many of my friends or my relatives or my families and I have watched burial upon burial upon burial and I'm also asking the people in this coffin that are lifeless and cannot move again where are they now the gospel answers that question so please let's read out one to go what are the four realities that the gospel comes to answer one is what origin lovely two is what meaning three is what morality for is what now destiny the lord bless you so let's begin romans chapter 1 verse 16 we want to quickly look at the first subheading in our teaching what the gospel is not sometimes for you to know what something is you have to have an idea sir of what it is not number one the gospel is not accept jesus and you will have more money. Oh, say, oh, good morning, dear brother. You know what? You're looking nice. Accept Jesus, and you will have more money. <laughs> Luke chapter 12 and verse 15. It's a blessing. The Lord is your strength in Jesus' name. God bless you. Luke 12, 15, please. Okay, maybe I'll read from my Bible here. Luke chapter 12, verse 15. Verse 15. Thank you. Please, can we read together, please? One, two, read. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of what? Covetousness. For a man's life consisted not in the abundance of the things that he possesses so the gospel is not bro you are poor if you accept Jesus you will be very rich if that idea is not balanced then the carnal man will only subscribe to the message of Jesus because he wants to use Jesus to become successful in this world. And the Bible says, if all our hope is to accomplish things in this world, he says, then we are of all men most miserable. So the gospel is not accept Jesus and you will make more money. In fact, the Bible tells us here that when you accept the gospel, then you must be rid or rid yourself of covetousness. So that means if you steal before and you accept Jesus, should you continue stealing? Okay. Number two, what the gospel is not. These are just foundational instructions. Number two, the gospel is not Jesus died for you so that you can continue living as you like. Please, if I'm saying the truth, say amen. First John 3, 7 to 10. The gospel is not Jesus died for you so that you can go and continue living as you like. No, please, let's read together. Now, I like your voice. 
because I would like to listen to your voice after now. So let's read together. 7 to 10. 1 to go. Little children, let no, wait. That means that it is possible to allow yourself to be deceived. Is that true? He says, permit no man to deceive you. Let's continue now. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is now look at this many times when people want to emphasize the gospel of grace which is correct if not taken out of context if grace is taken out of the context of obedience it will become another gospel so the bible tells us here that he that doeth righteousness is what did he say he that believeth now he said he that do it. So, righteousness is not only the ability to stand in the presence of God without a sense of guilt and condemnation as a result of the finished works of Christ. Righteousness is that although Christ has redeemed you and Christ has bought you with a price, then you glorify God by doing his will. Doing the will of God is called righteousness. Somebody say righteousness. So, righteousness is not only a nature the proof that you have been made righteous is that you go on to live righteously so that means that if i had a roommate as a lady and we are fornicating before when i receive the gospel of christ and the gospel of his kingdom should i still have a woman that is not my wife in the house no why because he that doeth righteousness proves that he is righteous are we together now yes even as he, that's God, is righteous. Verse 8, please. Let's read now. You know I like your voice. One, two, read, please. He that committed sin, wait, is of who? IBK. He that committed sin is of the pastor. Is of the devil. For the devil sinned from where now? So we see that in Genesis chapter 1 we have the pre-Adamite dispensation. It's called the anti-chaotic age or the dispensation of the angels. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 when God made the heavens and the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 is about 6,000 years from Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. So it was that time that Lucifer, the star of the morning rebelled against Jehovah Elohim and God casted him out. That's why Ezekiel said, How art thou fallen from heaven? O Lucifer, star of the morning morning so the bible said the devil sinned from the beginning so you see that it was the beginning that the devil also sinned right for this purpose the son of god was what manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil the works of the devil is not only sickness the works of the devil actually that Jesus came to destroy is the power of sin for when he comes with his life and you receive his life the power of sin over our lives is broken but you can now choose either to live like that or to turn away from his power are we together now verse 9 please now, now listen to this. You know we said that the gospel is not Jesus died for you so that you can continue living as you like. Is that correct now? Yes, please let's read together now. One to go. Whosoever is born of God. Somebody shout. Say born of God. I didn't hear you. Say born of God. Whosoever is born again. Whosoever is born of God. So being born of God, sir, is not a theory. It is not that somebody cajoled me and forced me to believe. It is actually a reality that a man can be born of God. He that is born of God does not commit sin. Please think about this scripture one minute. He that is born of God does not what? Is this the Bible? But another gospel tells you that you can continue in sin and expect grace to abound. Bible says God forbid. Yes sir. God forbid. So we see that <laughs> he that is whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. Now this is what it means. Let me help somebody here. Let's finish that verse. For his seed remaineth in him and he cannot sin. Did you see that? Because he is born of God. Let me explain it all men of every race 
irrespective of location, territory, age, or denomination, is actually a sinner. All men have sinned. Romans 3, 24, all have sinned. Whether you are rich or you are poor, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But for God to be able to deliver man from sin, he had to send his son, who was the sinless, perfect God man, to come and lay down his precious life on the cross at Calvary and then was buried, rose again for our justification. Now, this is what it means. When you come into Christ and you are born again, that does not mean that you will not still sin. Because the idea we used to paint to ourselves is that once you say, Jesus, I believe you, you will never sin again. No, no. That will be... That will be extremism. What the Bible says here, the word committed sin means whosoever is born of God does not make a practice of sin that means whosoever is born of God does not sin as a habit habitual sin that means whosoever is born of God does not continue in willful deliberate transgression against the stipulated laws and commandments of God so that means that when you are delivered from the power of sin if you are truly born of God then that thing that you used to do before that sin that you used to love before now you don't love it anymore now does that mean there will be times when you sinned there will be but it will be foolishness to now fall into the deceitfulness of sin by believing that even if I sin I am safe I can live as I like So the error where many people make make mistakes is that when they sin, they don't repent of their sins. They are not sorrowful about their sin and they just continue like that. They don't even confess their sin because they have a theology that tells them that you don't need to confess sin. But that's not true. The Bible says, if any man sin, if, okay, please, the next verse, verse 10, please. Verse 10, please, let's read this together now. Now, listen to this, please. One to read. In this, the children of God are manifest. Now, that means this is how we know the children of God. How? And the children of the devil. Whosoever do it. Please shout it. Whosoever what? Not righteousness is not of God. Can you imagine? Neither he that loveth not his brother. So the Bible says that if you are not, it did not say if you are not righteous. He said if you are not doing righteousness, you are not of God. So that means that it's either you are truly born again or you are not born again at all. So I cannot continue in sin and in willful disobedience and what I used to do that I know that God hates and I continue in it but I still say thank you Jesus, you have saved me. I will be in self-deception. Because the Bible says, whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God. Are we together now? Number three, what the gospel is not. The gospel is not accept Jesus and you will have a trouble-free life. You will not have any troubles again. Just accept Jesus. That Jesus is a user-friendly Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. John chapter 16 verse 33, please. What the gospel is not. John 16 verse 33. Now, this is Jesus about to leave. And then he's speaking to his disciples. He says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have what now? Peace. In the world ye shall have what brethren we shall have what in the are you in the world <laughs> but be of good cheer i have overcome the world so that means that while it is true that the victory of the believer is a reality in christ it is also true that when you accept jesus you can still have troubles 
Because this is why some people say, I'm not going to serve Jesus again. Because the gospel they preached to them was an incomplete gospel. So somebody looks at Jesus and then they say, Ah, Jesus actually loves you. And you know, if you are setting ah, go, 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 it will be over. And then after two weeks, the person looks at Jesus and it feels like cursing Jesus. Why? Because he was not told that Jesus said, Ah, there will be many tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That means the final issue about the matter of your entire existence will be that you won because Jesus has overcome the world and if you are in him you have overcome the world but it is in time that it will become a reality so the gospel is not that Jesus will give you a trouble free life John chapter 15 verse 18 to 20 what we are doing is Bible study okay John 15 18 to 20 can we read again, please? You know, you know, you know that scripture is it first John 2 15 now. Don't go there. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man now he didn't say if the pastor only, because you see people criticizing pastors, but you are not checking your own life as though pastor is now the mini God. No, if any man loves the world the love of who now the father is not in him ah if the love of the father is not in you that means that you do not have the life of the father and if you do not have the life of the father you cannot reign with the father if now let's read together now you know I like the way you read one two read please if the world hate you ye know that it hated me before he tell you. So that means there are times, maybe you write something on your Facebook post about Jesus Christ and then maybe you used to have 500 likes before when you write different things. You know, you just put one drama where they are dancing and then 500 views and 500 likes. And one day you just put something about the week and write scripture there and you'll be surprised maybe only five people will like it. And then you are like, uh-uh. Why are they not liking my post? Then some of us. You will remove it and quickly put another one. No it is because some of us have not been delivered from the applause of the world or the criticisms of the world Bill Johnson said if you are dead to the praises of men you cannot die by their criticisms that means whether they clap for you or they don't clap for you you stand for the truth then no matter what they say you will still stand your ground so if you do not live by the praises of men, you cannot die by the criticisms of men. So the world hates Jesus. Don't expect the end. Now, there are, um, let, let's not lie. There are people that will like you. But if the world and those that are in rebellion against God like you and continue liking you and your life does not change them, something may be wrong with your Christianity. Hallelujah. Now let's read verse 19 together, please. One to read. If ye were of the world the world will love now now listen the bible did not say the love will love its own he said the law the world will love his that means the world is actually a spirit it's called the spirit of worldliness it's actually called the spirit that walketh in the children of disobedience it's a spirit so the Bible says, if ye were of the world, the world will love its own. But because ye are not of... Somebody say, I'm not of the world. Well, I don't know. But if you are not of the world, say it louder now. I am not. But I have chosen you out of where? The world. Therefore, the world does what? Hates you. So that gospel that says that do everything to make sure that the world likes you. Is it a complete gospel? Because the fact is, the world is not designed to like godliness. The world is not structured to condone righteousness. In fact, the systems of the world seek to choke anything called God out of it. Is that true? Mommy, you are welcome. So you go to church, you go to a, um, to a school. Before, people used to pray in national uh, in assemblies. Is that correct? Now, there are many schools, even in the USA, that says that no prayer in school again. Is that true? They've removed prayer. Now they have removed certain courses from the syllabus. B 
because of Jesus. Recently, I, I heard about a boxer that they had to seize his, uh, his uh, what do they call this, their thing now? Endorsement or so. They had to withhold it because he says that he's, he's a Christian and he believes in Jesus Christ. So that means that if you commit to working with God, you may lose opportunities with men, but you will never lose the presence of God. Which one do you prefer? The presence of a man or the presence of your maker? Which one do you prefer? One more scripture, and then we enter our... Please, can you give me Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14? We are reading down to Second Corinthians 7 verse 3. Second Corinthians 6 14. So we are looking at what the gospel is not. Is that true? Yes. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness and what communion hath light with darkness. Verse 15. And what concord hath Christ? Yoruba, our fathers then, when they used to do it, they call it, be, they say, Emi Beliali. What concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? So that means there are two kinds of people. Is that correct now? Those that are of Christ, of those that are of Belial. Those that are believers or infidels so that means that there is no middle ground you are either in Christ or not in Christ there's nothing like you are in Christ but mm -mm. you are either in him or you are not in him what the gospel is not thank you Jesus finally before we continue the gospel is not God lives for you. The gospel is not God lives for you and the world revolves around you. It's not the gospel. So that means that your, your own existence is actually to live for God. It is not God that is living for you. So every time we sing, you know, there are some songs that are nice, but they are not theological. So there are songs that says, God is just chasing you and looking for you all around the street. It is true that Christ came to save the sinners. But it is also true that if the sinner rejects him in the end of his life, that sinner, where will he end, please? He's in the Bible. Verse, let's continue the next verse, please. We are going to chapter 7, verse 3. Now, please, let's read this instruction. Please, who are they talking to here? Unbelievers or believers? Believers. Please, let's read. One to read. Wherefore, come out from among them. That means that if I have friends that are luring me to continue in sin and to continue in a life that does not please God, what did the Bible say I should do, please? Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will if you do not come out from among them and you do not separate yourself and you touch the unclean thing, will God receive you? You see now. So that message of the unconditional love of God that is devoid of repentance, conversion, and obedience to the word of God is an incomplete gospel too. So the unconditional love of God, of God is true only in the light of what Jesus did and your, and your willingness to obey what he did. But it is an error if you say it is unconditional and that means continue living as you like. Don't worry, it's unconditional. After you die, God will know how to just, okay, okay, you, you, are, you, you not bab you, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Next verse, please. Have you ever asked yourself, what is the unclean thing that I am touching? Touch not the unclean thing. And I will be a father but I thought God is the father of everybody but God is saying here that it's not true I will be a what? a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and 
daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. That means that the Lord is true that he's a father to the fatherless, but he is not a father to the rebellious. That's what the Bible Jesus said, You are of your father, the devil. So that means that the character that you manifest as a human being will reveal to us either God is your father or the devil is your father. Because by their fruits, you shall do what now? Is it by their speaking in tongues? Is it by their dancing? Is it by their dressing? Mm -mm. But by their fruit. That means the lifestyle, everything about them will point to who they truly are from. Next verse, please. Listen now. The gospel is not all about God wants to give you. What will you give God? That gospel that does not cost you is not the gospel of the Bible. The gospel of the Bible cost God and it will cost you too. If it cost God to uh, send his only begotten son to die, Abby, trust me, it will trust you to also follow that only begotten son to go and reign with him. Please let this word sink into your spirit. Having therefore this what now? Promises dearly. So he's talking to church people. Is that true now? Dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from how many filthiness now? So somebody says, Well, my own is just uh, fornication and lie, but every other thing I'm okay. At least if I get eight over ten, you know, God will just say, Well, you are, are you a good boy. Well, yeah, 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 junior, junior, yeah, enter. Let us. That means the Holy Ghost will not do for you what you can do by yourself. Don't beg God to come down from heaven and do what He has empowered you or told you to do. Listen, God will never tell you to do something that you cannot do. If God says break from sin, that means there is a provision to break from sin. Let's not make God a liar. Bible says, let us cleanse ourselves from how many filthiness now? Now, question. What is filthiness in my life? You see, the gospel is not a theory. It's something that must be applied. So think about it. What is filthy in my life? Bible says, cleanse yourselves from it. Of the filthiness of the flesh and spirit. So, question one. How many kind of filthiness do we have now? I'm giving you example. How many now? Filthiness of flesh and the filthiness of the spirit. Now, what is filthiness of flesh? Filthiness of flesh is what the Bible calls outward sin. When you see drunkenness, eh? fornication, what other sins can we quickly see now? Cursing. Uh-huh. Lies. Uh-huh. Stealing. Thank you. Those things, people can quickly see it and say, ah, but the Bible also talks about the filthiness of the spirit. So you can go to church, you dress well, but there is bitterness in your heart against your neighbor. It's called the filthiness of the spirit. You fast for 40 days and 40 nights, and yet there is anger against people in you. The Bible calls it the filthiness of what? Of the spirit. You will never forgive, no matter how many people beg you. You are claiming right and you are in opposition with the will of God. The Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, how many people will not hear me now? God will not what? Hear me. So that means that no matter how much you speak in tongues, your prayer will not pass the ceiling if you regard iniquity where? In your heart. Filthiness of flesh and spirit. Perfecting what now? Somebody say holiness now. Holiness in the fear of God. Hmm. Martin Luther, many years ago said, you must first know God as an enemy before you can know him as a friend. Anywhere God is lightly esteemed and we don't talk about his holiness and his judgment and his justice against sin, and all we do is only about his love. What we are presenting to people is a Father Christmas God. Because the God of the Bible is not only love. He is love, yet he is holy. Is that correct now? 
And his love does not cancel his holiness. Neither does his holiness cancel his love. Everything is working together. So on the cross, on one side is the justice of God against sin. On the other side is the love of God for the sinner. Are you getting it? Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. You see, let me quickly say something about the ministry. The purpose of the ministry is not money. Whatever gift you have, it is true that people will bless you, yes. But the purpose of that gifting is not what now? It's not money. The purpose of it is to serve the will of God and his people. So, the aim of the gospel is not money. The, but money can be a means to advance the gospel. But the aim is not what? It's not money. Verse 3 now. Verse 3 and then. I speak not this to condemn you. So, the things I've been telling you, I'm not trying to condemn you. We are just checking scriptures. For I have said before that ye are in our hearts to die and live with you. So, what the gospel is not, we have looked at it. So, number one is what? The gospel is not accept Jesus and you will have more money and many things. Now, the next point is, what is the gospel? If the gospel is not all these things that are quite popular in our day, then what is the gospel? One of the reasons why we have a lot of uh, moral bankruptcy in our day is because we have a low view of God. Listen, you cannot fear God if you do not esteem him. If the God that was presented to you is one tiny puppy upstairs, you can't fear him. And you see, if you cannot fear God, you cannot walk in wisdom. And if you cannot walk in wisdom, there is big problem in the end. Because the Bible says the way of the transgressor is hard. The fear of God is the beginning of what? It is the end of wisdom. So there are more things, but the fear is the big. And unfortunately, there are many in church that don't even have the beginning. What is the gospel? Matthew chapter 16, from verse 24 to 27. I'll be explaining a few things. Matthew 16, 24 to 27. What is the gospel? Can we please read together? Want to read. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man, that means the love of God is so great that even if you are a drunkard, God can receive you. But there are times. Look at it. If, who now? Now, let's put names there. If the drunkard, Abby. If the fornicator, Abby. If the liar, Abby. If the tax collector, Abby. If the Yahoo boy, Abby. If the murderer, Abby. He says, if any man will what? Come after me. Let him on quietly, please come. Please come. I want to illustrate something. Please, are you be following me? Small. I'm sorry, sir, but be following. If any man will come, did he say come before me? You know our whole Christianity, we are the one that want God to be following us. Bible says, if any man will come after me, he now say, let him deny who now. Did he say let him deny anybody? Say let him deny. So, what does it mean to come after him? It means, ah, sir, you are not coming after me. Come, ah, Bible says, come after me. What it means is that he does not have a will of his own. That message that you are a son of God, that does not tell you too that a son actually lives to do the will of his father, is not Bible sonship. Because even Jesus at Gethsemane said, ah, Lord, if it be thy will, but not my will, but thy will. Be done. So, if any man will come after me, I'm sorry, sir, but before me, let him deny himself. So that means, sir, there are times you feel like taking that flower. There are times you want to eh, enjoy a little now. Uh, are you only now? And then they are watching that movie pornographic. Where you're like, good day, single come No, you even speak it on Shakalaba. You say, let him deny. Then take up what now? Listen, the cross is not a designer wear. You know, there's a design. It's good, it's fine, but the cross is not a designer wear. The cross is heavy. But it is in Jesus that it is light. Because even Jesus carried the cross at a particular time. Eh? Jesus said, ah, this thing is, please, it's heavy. The scorching is too much. Oh yeah, uh, Simon of Cyrene. <laughs> Jesus needed help. Who are you to think that you can carry the load of your life alone? Jesus said, if any man will come after me, deny himself. 
Uh, I want to do this. I want to Jesus, deny yourself. Uh, I want to have my way. I, my own Christianity. I am the boss. Is a lie. Deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life, we do what? Hey. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, will what? Do you understand what you just said now? So, sir, let's say this is his life and he wants to save it. Please put it at your back like this. Back them. Please, sir, back them. I'm sorry. Sir. Back them. Yes, like this. So, he wants to save his life, but he also wants to identify with Jesus and be attending church. The Bible says he will not know when he will lose it. But whosoever will lose his life and say, God, you know what? If this is what you require of me to follow you, I let go of it. He say, he will just later find out that I did not we find it. Why? Because the real life, what we call eternal life, you don't have eternal life. You actually have Christ and Christ himself is the life. So it is not a life that you can control as you like. No. The life that we speak about is in the person. That person is the real life. Is that true? Bible says in him was life and the life was the light of men. Please sit down sir. Thank you sir. God bless you sir whosoever will save his life will lose it for what is a man profited if he shall do what now gain all the Ferraris and all the jeeps and all the money and all the food and all the ladies if he shall gain the whole world and lose ah, his own soul or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul so what has your own Christianity cost you So the gospel, the gospel actually begins not with man but with God. Christ died to save the sinners and rose again. Yes, but listen, God is creator. Somebody say God is creator. How many of you believe in the authority of Scripture that what the Bible says is true? All right. So God is creator, and God is holy. He made man in His image, right? And man, by an act of his own will, rebelled against the commands of God. And the natural response of a holy God to a sinful man is wrath and destruction. Because God is too holy to build and condone iniquity. That was why he sent Adam and Eve out of the garden. Out of his holiness and out of his love. He did that. So that man will not eat of the tree of life and live forever in death separation from him but man cannot save himself everybody has now seen and everybody are under a, on a death row on their way to eternal damnation and they need a perfect sacrifice to atone for their sins and God again in his own love now decided to send his only begotten son Abi, in the person of Jesus to lay down his life as a ransom the bible says and God was at work in Christ reconciling the world to himself so that means that the person that gets the glory in the salvation of humanity is God because it is God himself that initiated our salvation but listen this same Christ was born of a virgin right and then he lived and walked among men for the word was made flesh and dwelt among men and we beheld his glory is that true but listen although we beheld his glory that was not all because the glory of god upon jesus worked our salvation by making him to go to the cross somebody said the cross so when jesus got to the cross the devil thought he got him and many disciples they ran away from him even mary jesus told mary he said a sword shall pierce your heart so that the, the angel told her he said a sword shall pierce your heart so that the thoughts of many might be revealed so upon the cross Jesus began to agonize and then one of the things he said is I am thirsty they gave him vinegar it was bitter he could not take it after a while he cried and this is the ultimate aspect he cried and said Eli Eli that is in Aramaic my God my God Lama Sabachthani why have you forsaken so the root of the problem of humanity is sin sin is not only a sinker sin is a destroyer sin is a ruiner sin is an 
embodiment of evil. So sin, the wages of sin is what? Is death. So Jesus took upon himself your sins, my sins, and the sins of the man in the beer parlor, and the sins of the prostitute on Allen Road, and the sin of those Poko Haram. Jesus died for everybody, but listen, if you reject him, if you do not receive his life, if you do not repent from your sin and turn from wickedness to believe his finished works on the cross, you will not be saved. You will be damned. You will go to hell. Why? Because this Jesus died, was buried, and on the third day, he rose from the dead and was seen by many for 40 days. And then he did not only rise from the dead, he ascended into heaven by clouds and is seated at the right hand of the majesty on high becoming both the Lord and Christ so that everyone through him can be saved because he has become our eternal high priest according to the order of Melchizedek so that means that if you reject Jesus you are rejecting life so the gospel of salvation is not complete if you do not discuss or tell people about that God is the one that made man and that man has sinned no matter how nice you are no matter how neat you are no matter how pious you are if you have not repented of your sins and have not believed in the gospel of Jesus Christ who came, who lived, who died and rose again then the Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16 and 17 he that believeth not is condemned already so to reject the message of the gospel is to harden your heart against the love of God. And the Bible says the wicked shall be turned into hell. The wicked is not somebody that slaps his neighbor. Anybody that rejects the love of God in Jesus Christ is wicked. Are we together? Are you wicked? Ask yourself. Don't, don't nod and say, yes, I'm not wicked. No. Think about, I, have you rejected Jesus? Or have you had the message of the gospel before and you did not still respond? Are you living on your own terms? Becoming the deciding factor of your own life and expect to reign with Jesus. It's not possible. No other religious leader is the way, the truth, and the life. Am I saying something, please? No other religious leader claimed to be the way to the Father. No other religious leader said that he will die and rise again. But Jesus died, was buried, rose again to never die again. You should fear that kind of a Jesus. Is that true? You, why will you you are wise you will not believe a leader that does not know where he will end because we spoke about the question of destiny where will I end the gospel the challenge is that the gospel offends the self centered because it presents the cross as it is not as men want it to be Listen, the gospel is a call to die. The gospel is not first a call to live. Listen, until the Holy Spirit works regeneration in your heart and you are imparted with faith to receive and believe the gospel. Listen, you are not alive. You are living dead. If the Bible says in him was life, outside him do you have life? The Bible says this is eternal life. That they may know thee, thy only true son, Jesus Christ. So that means that if you don't know Jesus, you are not alive. You are living, but you are not living. You are existing. Oh, yeah. The gospel is a call to die that you may truly live. If you have not laid it down, he cannot raise you up at the last day. Because at the time of, well, I will share on the resurrection, amazing things we are going to see tonight. In the time of the resurrection, when Jesus died and the veil of the temple was turned into two, the scripture says, many saints that are slept, they arose. And their family members saw them. And some people that have read about them, they saw them. They said, ah, you are Elijah, sir. Ah, you are Elijah. Ah, ah. Uncle Elijah. Ah, ah, see you. Ah, see you. Ah, you are Elijah. They saw them many times before they moved. Ah. Do you actually know that our gospel is an everlasting gospel? Only the church has the answer. Listen, the problems of the world will continue. But the church has the answer. The gospel is the answer. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. Our God is alive. Mm. 
Luke chapter 22, 41 and 42. I will soon talk on Calvary and the resurrection. If you are sick in your body, or you need whatever it is that contradicts what we are preaching, cannot stay in your body. If you will believe, huh, you will see the glory of God. Say amen. amen. This is Jesus now. Look at the gospel. Because Jesus is our perfect example. Is that correct? Yes. And he was withdrawn from then about a stone's cast and kneeled down and did what? And prayed. What did he pray now? He said, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, listen, until you get to that point in prayer where you can say, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. You have not yet prayed. So if all I'm doing in prayer is asserting my own will and that will is not entrenched in the will of God, I am deceiving my own self. And then the angel came to strengthen Jesus. So listen to this. The cross is actually the point of termination of self-rule and the entry point into the kingdom life. So when you are talking about the cross, you are talking of self-abandon or self-abandonment or relinquishing all so that God can be all in all. If you despise the matter of sin and its consequences and all you talk about is the love of God, you will be preaching an incomplete gospel. You must let men know that sin, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, sir, is it eternal life is the gift of, of God. Eternal life. Ah, this is interesting now. Third on our list, what did Jesus preach? Because there are many things today we are preaching in church that Jesus did not talk about. What did Jesus preach? Matthew. Let's start with Matthew chapter, I think chapter 3 verse 2. Matthew chapter 3 verse 2 and Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. Matthew chapter 3 verse 2. What did Jesus preach? Okay, let's open our Bibles. Okay, thank you. Can we read from verse 1? Please give us verse 1. Matthew chapter 3 verse 1, then we'll read 1 and 2. Let's see what Jesus preached. Now, this is John. The Bible says, And all the law and the prophets prophesied until John. Everybody were talking until John came. And the message of the prophets and the law is one. Repent was the message of the prophets. Is that true? First Kings chapter 18. Elijah comes and he says, How long ought he between two opinions? If God is God, serve him. If it is not God, then go to hell. He says, Repent. Repent was their message. When John came, what did John preach? In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of Judea. What was he preaching now? Verse 2, please. Let's read it together. One, two, with a very loud voice. Matthew chapter 3, verse 2. Okay, maybe you should say after me. Say after me. Okay. And saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I will explain. When a man says repent, that means regret of the evil that you are doing. That means be sorrowful that you are offending God. That means change your mind about your thoughts that do not align with the word of God that is presented to you. That means when truth is presented to you and you don't bow in submission in your heart, you have not repented. So repentance is more than emotion. Repentance is in decision. Somebody say decision. So if you don't make a decision, have you repented? So that means you can cry, hey Jesus, I'm sorry. If you have not decided to leave that which you were doing before, to begin to do that which God wants, have you repented? And if you have not repented, have you believed? And if you have not believed, will you have eternal life? No. 
Matthew chapter 4 verse 17. This is the message of John the Baptist. Let's look at the message of Jesus. Matthew 4 verse 17. When Jesus came to the scene, the word of God made flesh, the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person. What did Jesus teach now? From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So was the message of Jesus different from the message of John? Was the message of Jesus different from the message of the prophet? Where did we get our own message that is different from the message of Jesus? Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I will explain that kingdom of heaven, but not now. So the message that Jesus preached is repent. Give us verse 23, sir, of that same chapter. Verse 23. in verse 20 and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues now let's read you know I like your voice and preaching the gospel of listen is he preaching the gospel of shirt and tie of car and jeep eh no no let's talk now is that what he's preaching is he preaching whether you wear long shoe or you wear short shoe what was he preaching? That the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and diseases among the people. The gospel of the kingdom is that God is king and if you submit to his government, then you will have his life. The gospel of the kingdom is that God rules over the entire affairs of every man. No matter who you are, even if you think that you are the boss of your own life, on the last day you will stand before the eternal judge and you cannot give any excuse. You cannot say you did not hear the gospel. So Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. Jesus said repent. Matthew 25 verse 34. Matthew 25 verse 34. Let's see. The gospel of the kingdom. This is Jesus speaking and then he says, Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the family. So what was Jesus talking about now? The kingdom. Kingless living is not Christianity. You have to, when you live, we should be able to know whether there is somebody over you or not. And Dr. Masmuro of Blessed Memory says, any home where you have two head wait a, an animal with two head what do they call it a monster because it has two heads in christianity you don't have two heads you have only one head and who is the head of the church now jesus is the head jesus is the head so jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom now listen to this you don't come to jesus to get rich quick the God of the Bible does not enthrone money in the hearts of men. You don't come to get saved to become popular. You come to get saved from the wrath of God so that you can have the life of God, live for God, and reign with Him eternally. That's why you came. Because the original intention for God of God for man is dominion. Somebody say dominion. We are, we are going to enter Calvary soon now. In God's kingdom, we own nothing. Somebody say, I own nothing. Our generation likes to have everything. But the Bible says, in God's kingdom, you don't own anything. God owns you because he bought you with a price. So don't boast about eternal salvation when your life is devoid of submission to the eternal king. John chapter 8 verse 55. Jesus began to speak to us and then he says, listen it's very simple. If I see you doing the commands of God that means that you have his life in you and if you have his life in you then you will reign with him. So boasting that I have eternal security in Jesus but I am not living by his word on a daily basis is an error. So one save forever save is an incomplete gospel unless there is a willingness and a commitment to continue in Christ. The Bible says, abide in me and I in you. That's union. 
Ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I should say I know him not, I should be a liar like unto you. But I know him and keep his... So don't say you know God if you don't keep his saying. So the message that Jesus preached is repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. We are entering somewhere now. What is the church to witness? What did Jesus send us to witness? What did Jesus say we should preach? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Let's see what Jesus said we should preach. What did Jesus say we should preach? I think it's a popular scripture. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be what? Witnesses on now. Did he say witness unto them? <laughs> he said witnesses. Please, Uncle Heidi, please come again. And ye shall be witnesses unto me. That means if he carries the megaphone and is moving around, who should he be witnessing about? Did he say witnessing unto them? He said witnesses. That means when we enter a court of law, we, we call something the plaintiff. So we enter the court of law and then they say, do you have any witness? And they say, yes, sir. I am my Lord. I am the witness. And they say, okay. So speak to us. And then he says, um, Jesus is not dead. He is not one of the religious leaders that died and they don't even know his burial ground. Jesus is alive. He is witnessing unto me. What he is doing is that he is compelling me to come and prove that what he's saying is true. So, what did the please sit down, sir? God bless you. What did the early church witness? Because if we do not know what they witness, we will not experience what they experience. Are we ready now? What did the early church witness? Give us this scripture. Acts chapter 4, verse. Okay. Acts chapter 2, verse 32 first. Acts 2 32. The church is called to witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Acts 2.32 The first sermon the early church preached and this Jesus of God what? I want you to shout it so that the devil himself can hear. And this Jesus of God who raised him up? God raised Jesus up whereof we all are so what did they witness now? The resurrection of Jesus. Acts chapter 3 verse 15. So our witness is that he is alive. Acts 3 15. Thank you. Another sermon again. And then the apostle speaking said, And you killed the prince of life whom God had raised from the dead whereof we again are so what was their witness about sir the 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 resurrection of aha <laughs> this is interesting give us one more scripture give us Acts chapter 4 verse 33 I think ah. can we read now and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Why did God give them power? To witness what? The resurrection. So if you want to witness and see the demonstration of God's power, what should you witness about? The resurrection. So the most powerful times of the church, especially in Nigeria, is Easter period. Why? Because that is the only time we remember to talk about the... But it was their everyday message. Listen, the resurrection of Jesus is more than an history. It is a reality even today. Somebody say Jesus was alive, is alive, shall forever be alive. The resurrection is the message for today. in Matthew chapter 28 let me just summarize because of time there were they, they actually said that that liar and that thief called Jesus he said that he will rise again oh. so let us set a watch to ensure 
that he does not rise again. For he said he will build the temple, pull it down and build it again after three days. So they set a watch of four men to be shifting every three, three hours. And how many hours do we have in a day now? So that means in about three days, they had 72 soldiers changing per time. How will you now lie to us that Jesus is dead and the tomb is empty? Can 72 Roman soldiers under the threat of death and judgment sleep off for three days and nobody saw and that somebody came to steal him and nobody could say, hey, where are you taking him to, sir? Eh? No, there's something supernatural about it. And they set a watch and sealed the tomb. In fact, what they used to seal the tomb if you is like a seal. So if you break it, it will be obvious that so, the Bible said the stone was rolled away. And Jesus, one man cannot roll the stone they used to. The Bible said an angel came, rolled away the stone, and the grave clothes was carefully put aside. Ah, that means Jesus was not in a hurry to run away. You know, if it were some of us, ah, Moji, eh? The Bible says, and was declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. So that means that even the resurrection validates that truly there is a God, for God raised him up from the dead, and there is a Spirit because the Holy Ghost was part of the process. Somebody said Jesus is alive. They say he is not here. He is risen. Come and see the place where the Lord lay. So the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious ruler, the members of the Sanhedrin, they now brought much money. Listen, they sold Jesus for how many pieces of silver? Now, Bible students. Eh? 30 pieces of silver. What they get now? How much do you want to pay 72 soldiers to be on Mopo for 30 days? The Bible said they gave him huge, they gave them huge amount. But listen, the man that died and rose again cannot be kept in the grave again. So no matter what you say, he is still alive. So they paid men to deny the proof of the resurrection. But those that saw him are too much. They cannot deny that truly Jesus rose from the dead. Because when he rose, not only the angels, even men, everybody saw him. And one of the proofs in theology, for you to confirm certain doctrines, you need a lot of eyewitnesses for it to be part of history. So there are many eyewitnesses that saw Jesus. That was why when they began to slaughter them and say, shut up, did you see Jesus? They said, ah, he's alive. They said, shut up. So they kept killing them, but they cannot deny, they saw him. How can you say it? They saw him. He's alive. <laughs> I'm happy that Jesus is alive. Oh. Because if Jesus died and did not rise again, ah, you will live in an eternity without God. That means there is no hope for you after now. That means the question of destiny itself has not been answered. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Thank you. Much less love and beauty, and less worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy Jesus. You're the cup that won't run dry. Let us quickly go to Calvary. Hmm. I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. We will go to Calvary, we will look at the implication of the resurrection, and then we will pray. Let us go to Calvary. At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I'm happy all the day let's go to the cross Calvary Matthew chapter 27 thank you Jesus Matthew chapter 27 please verse 46 and verse 50 Jesus died and rose again 
Matthew 27 verse 46 please let's open our Bibles we need to really catch up today because of time Matthew chapter 27 verse 46 the scripture says and about the ninth hour Jesus cried Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. my God my God why have you forsaken me Jesus experienced separation from God as the sinner substitute so that he lost the presence of the father so that you and I can now have the presence of the father irrespective of where you are you don't need to be in church to experience the presence of God you have become the temple of the Holy Ghost the Bible says God does not dwell in temple made with hands your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost so when you live your life you live your life with a consciousness that you are a mobile temple does mobile temple sit down in the midst of iniquity and partakes of it on the cross so Jesus died and then the story goes in verse 65 and 66 after he died actually one of the centurion that pierced him when blood and water came out he said truly this is the son of God atheism, mormonism and all kinds of isms and ideologies that men have tried to propound has not transformed the life of anybody only the message of the gospel truly changes lives so a centurion looks at him on the cross and says this man is truly the son of God Pilate said unto him you have a word so they made sure that they kept Jesus in the tomb but let's see 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 18 you are Yahweh 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 Alpha Omega you are Yahweh Alpha Omega for the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved uh, it is the power of God so when you hear the gospel and you are not rejoicing maybe you are not yet saved because the message of the cross is foolishness so the, what we are saying now is not waiting your appetite because the Bible says foolishness so them that are on their way to eternal damnation how can you say that a man died and because he died everybody will live again uh -uh, the bible says for in one man Adam we all died so that in the second and the last Adam everyone through him can be saved it's called the principle of substitution the substitutionary work of Jesus on the cross it was a vicarious death First Corinthians chapter 1 from um, chapter 15 we read verse 1 to 6 and then I give you a few notes You are brooding over every darkness. Now, God will begin to give us answers to certain questions as we teach now. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel. Now, the message of the gospel has not changed. It is those that are preaching it that have changed it. The Bible says, I declare unto you the gospel which I did what now? That means my message is not changed. Which I preach unto you, which also ye have received and wearing ye stand, verse 2 by which also ye are so how are you saved? by believing the gospel if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain so the assurance of salvation is scriptural that if you abide in him, you will also reign with him so what you are working for is not just fear of hell. Uh -uh. You are actually working for eternal rewards. If you abide in Christ and you do good works, there is reward. But if you were in Christ and then you turn away from him, it is not reward that you will receive. It is damnation. That's what the Bible teaches. Now let's read now. Verse 3 please. This is interesting now. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received. How that Christ died for our sins according to scriptures. Listen, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures is not the complete gospel. Let's see the balance now. The next verse, please. And that he was... So the summary of the gospel is Christ died for our... And he was 
buried uh -huh. and that he did what now rose again that thought they are caught in ah. hallelujah verse 5 and that he was seen of Cephas so one man saw him and then the 12 uh -huh. verse 6 after that he was seen of above what now for you to validate your witness actually the effectiveness of any history and any event is determined by the number of eyewitnesses that it has before a story can really enter history you must have many people that saw it not just uh, actually they said they saw him in the bedroom <laughs> for you to know that the disciples were not play acting the bible tells us that when mary got there and she saw that the tomb was empty she ran away and she said they have stolen jesus body you hey they have stolen his body now if they were play acting the disciples ought to say eh, okay now nah, no problem that means he has risen no when she now said he's alive peter said ah, ah, are you sure ah, mary ah, hey oh share your money hey. peter said let, let me go so where peter got there and he saw and then Thomas came and said, So, Ibu said, You saw him. If I see him now, I must touch him. Jesus said, Reach for my hand. Thomas touched it again. But listen, you are more blessed than Thomas. Thomas saw Jesus physically and he still doubted. Abby? Jesus said, Blessed are you who do not see yet believe. Do you believe? Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. Hey. Of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are falling asleep. So he was actually saying that it is not only disciples that saw him, many other people they saw him. But we see him too. We see him in his word. We see him by the testimonies of changed lives around. We see him in salvation, in healing, in miracles and deliverance. Because miracles are the divine sign languages of God to communicate his love and his power to a dying generation. Somebody say, I believe in miracles. How many of you believe God does miracles? So let us write the implication of Calvary. Implications of Calvary. We are going to look at five or six. And then we check the resurrection and pray. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday, very soon, for a crown. Number one, implication of Calvary. Number one, Jesus was punished that you and me might be forgiven. So there is hope truly in the promise of the cross that Jesus died and was punished experienced the full weight of the crushing of the father on the cross so that he can pay in full the penalty for our sins so on the cross Jesus was punished so that you can be, because I, I need forgiveness I was a wretched sinner but the Bible now says while you are yet sinner somebody still died Isaiah chapter 53 Isaiah chapter 53 you see in verse 4 and 5 you can just take down the notes and go study at home because of time in verse 4 and verse 5 you will see that Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows and yet we did esteem him as stricken and smitten of God and afflicted verse 5 says but he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement for our peace was upon him and with his is it we will be healed? do you know what that means because God is I am that I am it means he is eternal now that means there is no past, present, or future with him. He is both dateless past and dateless future. Time and eternity converge in his person. He is the eternal I am. So if he says by his stripes we are healed, 
that means as you are listening if you believe this suddenly you notice that you are already healed so it is not actually that you will be you are it's a reality are we together please oh are we together please so are you sick in your body ah, ah, the gospel takes care of it if you will believe wherever, wherever you are you'll be healed number two he was wounded so the first what was the first lesson now Jesus was punished so that we might be forgiven so the highlight of that note is what forgiveness right number two healing he was wounded so that we might be healed Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 to 17 Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 to 17 you see the healing ministry of Jesus how that he began to move and the Bible says when the even was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the evil spirit with his word and he did all that were sick do you know what that means Jesus said the Bible says Jesus eat all how many did he heal so that means even if it is an infirmity that does not yet have a name Jesus has done what now this is what it means why do why do i how did i arrive at that, at that the bible says after jesus died and resurrected there is only one thing god gave him a name if all that jesus did for 33 and a half years the only thing he got was a name that name must be powerful wherefore god also has highly exalted him and given him a name that at the name of jesus how many knee we bow in fact on the cross even those that were trying to mock him they were bowing they didn't know that they were fulfilling scripture so the knee of sickness also bows to the name of Jesus. The knee of barrenness also does what now? Bows to the so the knee of poverty also does what now? Bows to the name. The knee of consistent failure also does what now? Bow. The knee of confusion also does what now? Anything you can talk about that is not pertaining to life and godliness also does what now? Let every other name fade away. Hey, let every other name fade away till there's only you let every other name fade away Jesus take your place let every other name fade away in our lives tonight let every other name fade away anything in your life that contradicts the word of God I pray that by the power of the cross tonight they are destroyed in Jesus name point number three Jesus was made sin for us oh, this, is, this is lovely listen a message is not powerful if you do not see Jesus in it it is not the preacher that you celebrate it is the one that we preach about that we are celebrating since you have been hearing me since, since afternoon are you not seeing the glory of God in the face of Jesus are you not beholding God through his son Verse, number 3 says he was made sin for us that we might be, be made righteous in him 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21 he was made sin on the cross so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the what now righteousness of God in him and it is on the grounds of righteousness that you can decree a thing and expect it to be established because your righteousness is not your own it is the righteousness of Christ in that he satisfied the entire div divine claims of justice paid in, 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 in full the price for our redemption by his atoning work on the cross and his propitiating work and then he died was buried rose again and is now sitting down at the right hand of the father as the one that ever lived to make intercession for the saints before God so he was made sin you know what it means to make him sin somebody that didn't know sin they made, he was made sin that was why God that union he had with God had to be broken because God and sin light and darkness cannot cohabit verse 4 um, point number 4 thank you Jesus ah, thank you somebody say thank you Jesus Hebrews chapter 2 verse 9 Romans chapter 5 verse 10 Jesus tasted death so that we might share his life. 
Now that gives me joy and confidence because for the Christian, death is not a threat. Now, am I saying you should accept death and say, death, come and carry me? That's not what, uh, swing low, swing shady, you're coming for to carry me. Off. That's not what I'm saying. Don't allow death to take you on. T- you, may you not die untimely in Jesus' name. But listen, death, we are not afraid of death. The Bible says, for it was impossible for the grave to hold Jesus down. I mean, somebody died and the grave could not. Ah, he tried holding him and ah, drop him. You can't hold him down. For death could not hold him captive, even in the grave. Who is Lord now? Hey, even in the grave, Jesus. If Jesus could conquer the grave, there is nothing in your life that he cannot conquer. Barrenness trembles at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. You have been disappointed. You have submitted applications. They have rejected you. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about him. If you submitted application here, I'm praying the next time you hear about it, it will be approved. If you submitted job application here, we approve it in Jesus' name. You reign. You ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. He's mighty. Listen to this now. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. Where is Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9? Or Romans chapter 5, verse 10. You will actually see that Jesus tasted death so that we might have his life. The Bible says, But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor that he by the grace of God ah, should not see and taste death for that means Jesus tasted death for you Jesus tasted death for you sister. he tasted what now death listen if he tasted death for me and something is happening in my life that looks like death should I accept it no. Bible says submit yourself therefore unto God resist the devil don't keep quiet when the enemy is afflicting you the Bible says the night shall the son of wickedness afflict you if he's afflicting you then either you are transgressing the law of God or you are willing not to take your place but not tonight after tonight things will begin to change because you are going to take your place in Jesus Christ and you are going to decree with authority and it will be established how can the enemy continue to afflict us? And then we are looking at our lives mediocre. Tap your neighbor say, don't accept what Jesus has not done for you. Accept only what Jesus did. Hallelujah. Number what now? Number five. Very good. Ah, I like this one. Jesus was made a cause that we might receive the blessing. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the, the word redeemed is from the word apolutrosis. It means to buy back with a price. To pay ransom to acquire a slave. Bible says Christ has redeemed us from the law. Be made a cause for us. Okay? Because the Bible says cost is every man that hangeth on a tree. That the blessings no, the blessing not the blessings, the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles and that we might receive the promise. So the foundation for the promise of the spirit is the blessing. What is the blessing? The blessing is not Kajib house, shoe. They are fine, they are good. You can have them. But listen, they must not have you. The blessing is called justification by faith. Write it. Being justified as a result of the work of his grace, we now have peace with God. What is justification? Justification is God declaring a sinner as saved. A sinner as righteous. A sinner as holy. A sinner as just. On the account of his faith in what he did through his son. Justification is God declaring and acquitting the the, the sinner. 
So God proclaims you just and acquitted, based, discharged and acquitted on the account of what his son did. Number seven. Number seven or number six? Ah. He endured our poverty so that we might en- enjoy abundance is in the scripture too you see the challenge actually with the gospel of prosperity is that second corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 the challenge with the um, message of prosperity is that uh, many times we don't say all the issues we have discussed about sin we just say that god does not want you to be poor and then get rich quick no 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 but prosperity is part of the provision of jesus please accept it that prosperity is part of what the provision of Jesus is part of it, please. Don't hate prosperity so much that it does not reflect in your own life. Because anything you fight, you will not see it in your own life. Are we together? But it must be put in context. Let's read what the scripture says. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, was Jesus rich? Is this a sin to be rich? Jesus was rich. Yet for your sakes, God bless you. He became poor that ye through his poverty might be what? Somebody say, I declare in the name of Jesus, the cause of poverty has been broken in my life in the name of Jesus. No, I said poverty. Eh, this, no, no. The scripture says, my kingdom through prosperity shall yet spread abroad. There are many things you cannot do if you are not prosperous. Do you know what the scripture says? It says, a wise man and a poor man live in a city. No, a, a rich man and a poor wise man live in a city. The Bible says, but the wisdom of the poor man is despised. So, you can be poor and have wisdom, but your wisdom so that means you can say things that are correct but because oh they will, they will trivialize your message so sometimes res, that's not say result does not matter let your life so shine it didn't say in your bedroom where did he say before men there are some things some of you us believe because people have results if they don't have results you will change your mind eh prosperity gives you options I will prosper and my soul will prosper in my prosperity my soul will not be bankrupt of the life of God number 7 now is that true Jesus bore our shame this is powerful that we might be accepted in the beloved Matthew 27 35 to 36 Jesus bore our shame do you actually know that anybody that does not have Jesus, when they see a true believer, do you know they are intimidated by your presence? You just notice somebody is just uncomfortable because you are around. And you are not, it's not this Christianity of frowning your face at everybody. I'm saying even when you are smiling, why? They know that there is something, Sister Christiana, that you have that they do not have. So on the account of that, they envy you, but they, they don't know how to, to say it. So they are looking at you. Things are working and they're like, but how are you? But they cannot ask you. Unless the humble one that will say, Ebmo, how will they shake him? Eba means sorrow. You know, when you are rich or when you are very, what would they say? They, he went somewhere. And it is true, he went somewhere. You went to the cross. See, when else they ask you, where did you go? Say, I went. No, no, I went somewhere. I went where? So, somewhere. See, ah, you touched something. I touched too. I touched the blood. Jesus said, if you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, they say, ah, that's cannibalism. Oh, what? Everybody's drinking blood. It depends on the blood you are drinking. Everybody's transacting with blood. It depends on the blood you are using. I shared this in two days ago that a babalawo will carry 800 naira chicken, brother K, and slaughter that chicken. And mention, what's your name? No, what's your name? Sir? And say, share one more. You need to do. Sorry, sir. No, no, you need to do. That's what I mentioned. No. You are in Canada, but I want you to, I want you to come back home. And then Shagun in Canada says, okay, um, okay, all right. And then he bought a flight ticket and pays over 100,000 and comes back home. If the blood of a chicken can make a man board a flight, then the blood of Jesus can compel your destiny to locate you wherever you are. What are we talking about? 
blood of 800 naira ticking has a voice in the realm of the spirit. The Bible said, God called it, Cain and said, the voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. How much more the blood of Jesus, the perfect sinless lamb of God, that, con- that has the eternal spirit, that died, was buried and rose again. You now plead that blood and the devil does not flee. It's a lie. So when next the devil comes to harass you, uh, calm down. Just remember the teaching. Uh, the blood. Just check us. The blood. And then he says, because when you don't know the efficacy of the blood, the enemy will cheat you. So you are noticing something in your life that contradicts Calvary. Just plead the somebody shout the blood of Jesus. Tonight, when you get home, wherever you are going, before you sleep, just sit down in a place and remember what Jesus did. Remember that Jesus was buried and he actually rose again. And then just begin to plead. If the blood of a chicken can speak, the blood of Jesus, the scripture says, speak get better things than the blood of Abel. Because even the blood of Abel was not the blood of a righteous man. There is a difference between a righteous man and an innocent man. Abel, his blood was saying vengeance. Chibi, they say Abel was a nice man. How can his blood be saying vengeance if there was nothing wrong to? But the blood of Jesus speaketh. Somebody say better. Say, say better life. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me say one more thing. We have to pray because of our time. Ah, it's paining me that I'm not able to teach on the resurrection. Okay. Let me read something to you. God imputes Christ's righteousness to the believer. Sorry. God imputes Christ's righteousness to the believing sinner. The sinner who turns to Christ, repents of his sin and believes the gospel. God calls that one righteous. And on that account, he can frustrate the, the devices of the enemy in his life. Let me just give you one scripture on the resurrection and then we pray. You will just, just two prayer points tonight and then we are done. Two prayer points. Somebody said the power of the resurrection. Listen to this. Jesus died, was buried, and rose again from the dead. How many of you believe it? Uh-huh, you believe it? The I am that I am can never stay dead. He is not alive before. He remains alive now. That means when we are talking about the resurrection, we are not talking about what happened before. We are saying that it is still working. Won't you say? It's working. Even now. Somebody says it's alive. It's working. So if Jesus did it in time past and raised Lazarus from the dead, he can raise the dead even today. Are we together now? Anything dead in your life, I command it to come back to life. Listen, without the resurrection, Jesus will have been in the class of confusion. Okay, sorry, Confucius. And other ideologies, other religious leaders, other fanatics, other prophets. But listen, it is the resurrection of Jesus that distinguishes him as the son of God. Somebody say Jesus. Oh no. Jesus is the son of God. Jesus is not in a museum. Going around and looking for your own religious leader. Ah, Jesus is not in a museum. So even if you go to the tomb, you are only going there to play. Is Jesus there? Is Jesus on the cross? Eh? No. Where is he now? He is risen. Somebody say he is risen. Does he live on your inside? The kingdom of God is a supernatural kingdom. The kingdom of God is an invisible kingdom. The kingdom of God is within. That means you are a mobile kingdom person. You are a kingdom minded youth. That means anywhere you are going, there is a consciousness that the one that died and rose again lives on the inside of me. So no matter the threat against me, even if you kill my body, listen, the scripture says, fear the one, don't fear the one that can only carry gun and kill your body. He said, fear the one that can kill both your body and your soul in there. He said, that one, fear that one. And listen, if that one is on your side, even death itself is a transport system. So death is just a vehicle to convey you to the next place. That means you are, you are not really dead. You are, I don't know if you understand. Death is a transport system. Death is just the driver to say, hey, want to radio? Yeah, let's go. But listen, you are not ready to die yet. So when death comes, I say, hey, well, Buster, I say, if I see the blood that way, may death pass over you. May death pass over you. One scripture. 
Scripture says, by the resurrection of Jesus, he proved God's verdict of his son. Our vindication is from the Father because the world actually thought that God hates Christ and caused Christ and killed Christ. But it is true that God crushed Christ. But it is also true that God raised him from the dead. That was the proof that Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is the Son of God. So the Son Jesus, now the only Son of God is correct. She be not true. I be not lie. Jesus is alive. I will say one thing and then we pray. Everybody stand up. What I want to say now is we change your life. Just stand up. Do you believe that Jesus rose again? Because we are going to pray now. Do you believe that Jesus rose again? Please close your eyes. There are nine implications of the resurrection. I will teach you when next we meet. One of the implications of resurrection is that Jesus has also been coronated as Lord and Christ. That means he is the one that will judge every man after our days are over. So if you reject him today, on that day, when he stands before, when you stand before his father and the very angels, he will say, I know you not. Although you were a worker, but depart from me. Ye worker, ye that work iniquity, I never knew you. So the first application of this is that you must repent of your sins and you must say, Jesus, I don't want the doors of heaven to be shut against me. I believe that you are true. I believe that you are alive and I want to receive your life. While all eyes are closed, I want you to pray. If you are here and truly you have not turned away from your sins, you have continued to live in rebellion against God, but you have had the teaching, the word of God, that in Jesus alone is life. In Jesus alone is meaning. In Jesus alone is peace. In Jesus alone is fulfillment. Is Jesus alone is eternal security. Then wherever you are, or you are also here, you notice your life that you have drifted from the way of the cross. You notice that you have been living for yourself. You want to come and yield yourself and begin to walk with him committedly and genuinely wherever you are while all eyes are closed I would encourage you by the mercies of God to just raise up your right hand and identify for anybody that denies the message of the gospel I will deny Jesus said but you want to humble yourself tonight and say father I recommit to a true work with you while all eyes are closed please raise up your hand and say that Jesus I come to you tonight oh Jesus and say, Jesus, I turn my life over to you. Jesus, I turn my life over to you. Hmm. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Hey, hey, hey. I give myself away. So you can you listen now? The spirit of the Lord is speaking to me that there are people here presently in your life you have not repented of known sin, those sins are there, and you are just with those sins, those gadgets and objects are with you, and you have not renounced them, you have not renounced those hidden things of darkness but you are also here tonight and you want to say father I am sorry I want to receive your life I want to rededicate my life to you please come to the front I want to quickly pray with you before we do the last thing you are here you want to rededicate your life please don't look at anybody I will count one to seven and then I continue the scripture says today is the day of your salvation now is the appointed time I will count one to seven and then we continue please you are here and you want to rededicate your life you want to continue a genuine work with God I will count one to seven don't despise these words at all one two three four don't hold back five 
God bless you. If you are here like that, please come outside. Six. Seven. And if you are listening to me and you know that your life is wayward, your life is without Christ. You are living in sin but claiming to be holy and you truly want Jesus to come and reign in you. Repent of your sins wherever you are and turn to the Lord Jesus and cry to him in repentance to have mercy on you and he will in no wise cast you out. Father, I ask for as many that will turn to you tonight and even after now that by your mercies, because you have said in your word that whoever believes you, you will in no wise cast out. I ask that you receive them and impart into them your righteousness in the name of Jesus. Second thing we are going to quickly do. You are here and you desire a better walk with the Holy Spirit. You are here, you desire baptism in the Holy Ghost. You are here, you desire fire upon your altar wherever you are. Just stay there. Raise up your right hand. You are going to pray like this. Say, Father in the name of Jesus. Ah, yeah. Say, Father in the name of Jesus. I believe in my heart the word of God that Jesus died he was buried on the third day he rose again he ascended to heaven and he has become be more fervent he has become the baptizer in the Holy Ghost and fire therefore I ask now Jesus of Nazareth refill me with the Holy Ghost and power to live a godly life open your mouth and pray now Jesus fill us again with your Holy Ghost and power with your Holy Ghost Mantakataya and power with your Holy Ghost and power with your the Casa Parite with your Holy Ghost and power, dear Father. I ask for as many that are praying now that you send your fire, let your fire descend upon their spirit, let your fire descend upon their spirit, Lord. I ask in the name of Jesus, let your fire descend. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Seek and everybody lift up your two hands. Man de 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 as many that cry to you tonight, Holy Ghost, fill your people. Ye disataya, rata bataya, lembra katosha, likato shabataya, lidedede isata. Lord, I ask at the count of five, as many that desire a refilling and an infilling with the Spirit of God, let the Holy Ghost begin to touch. One, two, lekete parataya, Spirit of God, confirm your word. Three, four, Akadabasia. Yes, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Receive fresh fire, receive fresh fire. That's right, receive fresh fire. Let the power of Pentecost begin to rest upon the people now. I see the heavens open and the Spirit of God descend. Your life must not remain the same again. This is a place. We have people who are set on fire. Cry to God and say, Father, let your fire fall. One, two, three, four, five. Let the fire fall. I send the word of God and I declare in the name of Jesus. It's falling now. It's falling now. It's falling now. It's falling now. The power to love righteousness. The power to hate iniquity. The power to be free. From the law of sin and death. Just be sensitive wherever you are. And release the power of the spirit. In the name that is above every other name. 
and release the power of the spirit in the name of jesus let the fire burn you reign you reign elohim you reign you reign you reign elohim you reign you reign you reign elohim you reign yes jesus fresh fire 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 it's burning it's burning your altar your altar is being quickened your altar your service for god is becoming more effective god is sharpening your accent he's sharpening your accent for the lord has said i have made you a sharp threshing instrument with you i will break rocks into pieces i release now the fire of the spirit in the name of jesus the fire of the spirit let it burn let it burn let it burn, let it burn, let it burn, let it burn. Jagadagada Saparataya, Lambrosha Pratea, Lento Perosa, Rakato Shapana, Lagadaga Sagada, Ikato Sapea. In the name of Jesus, let the fire fall. Let the fire fall. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Everybody, lift up your two hands. Two more minutes and we are done. Lift up your two hands. I want you to be desperate tonight. Holy Ghost, you cannot lie to us. Likabarato Shamanamana. It does not matter whether you, you are in the choir or you are drumming. The Holy Ghost is here to touch everybody. You are going to shout the fire of the Holy Ghost seven times and it's going to begin to rest upon you. You cannot come from Exu, come from the university and return without nothing. No. You are going to shout Holy Ghost fire three times and His hand will descend upon you. Are you ready now? One, two, ready, go. Holy Ghost fire. Rakota Bosha. One. Holy Ghost fire. Two. Touch. Touch, touch, touch. Don't see anything. The fire is burning. From the top of your head, the weight of his glory. Uh, uh, there is somebody here. The weight of his glory. Yes, Lord. I see a fresh fire coming upon three people here. Your work with God is receiving a revival. I see the glory of God in this place. There is fire in this place. Be sensitive. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn. There is fire in this place. It's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn. Jesus, Jesus, He's right here where you are. Wherever you go, let His Spirit and His power be upon you, 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 be upon you. Upon brothers and sisters in the name ayayaya shabataya let the fire the fire is burning now the fire is burning now reketesha brasote abrataya rakashata leketosha you will never be the same you will never be the same yes jesus thank you for your fire here oh shalada brada davos the Lord is saying the season of pain is over for you. I am bringing you to a season of refreshing. I am bringing you to a season of joy. The enemy wants to steal your joy. But the Lord is saying I am restoring to you the years that the canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm has stolen from you. Just help her please. The Lord said I am bringing a restoration. Please hold it. In the name of Jesus. That's right. What is happening to us is called the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. Strengthening your heart building conviction you have decided not to compromise but the enemy wants to frustrate you and wants to compromise the will of god but you have said no and the lord that sees in secret has come to reward you in the open therefore i ask for a fresh mantle a fresh fire a fresh fire a fresh fire upon you upon your ministry upon your voice such that as you lift up jesus you draw men to him as you lift up jesus souls are saved as you lift up jesus lives are changed lives are changed ah, yeah, 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 yeah. the Lord has called you as a deliverer in your family 
he has made you a trailblazer a pathfinder I ask that that man to rest now father let it rest heavily from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet let our lives not be the same Jesus Jesus there is hope there is hope for a tree that is cut down at the scent of water it will rise again the Lord says I should tell you there is hope for you the heavens and earth adore you angels bow before you you are beautiful wisdom wisdom clarity and wisdom you are beautiful, you are beautiful. Heaven and earth, heaven and earth adore you. Angels bow before you. You are beautiful. You are beautiful. Heaven and earth, heaven and earth adore you. I ask that the glory of God man choose you. Hey, you are beautiful. Light, 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 light. Sing heaven and earth, heaven and earth, adore you. Angels, angels, bow before you. You are beautiful. Heaven and earth. I declare upon you joy, 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 joy. Everything that has called you to share tears in the secret. I declare joy, joy, joy. Restoration, restoration. Yatosha, brate keto, itabaratea. Yes, your joy will not be stolen from you. The Lord is your light and your salvation. Why should you be afraid? The Lord is your light. You are beautiful. Heaven and earth, heaven and earth, adore you. The glory of God matches you. Beautiful Jesus, beautiful Jesus. One more time, sing heaven and earth. Ay 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 Angel, hey, bow before you. You are Rataya. The glory of God. You are beautiful. Sing heaven and earth. Heaven and earth, adore you. Angels bow. You are, you are, you are beautiful. Hey, 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 hey. You are beautiful. Can I pray? I see a lot of people here. You are depressed. You are disappointed. There is frustration because there is no money. Can I pray now? Father, I declare in the name of Jesus. Upon everybody that is experiencing lack, Lord, send restoration. Send restoration send restoration the Lord said I should tell my brother that he loves you and he wants you to remain in him he has set before you an open door which no man can shut except you he says walk before me and be thou perfect he says trust me for everything he says relinquish all to me he says and I will magnify my name in your life he says the season of travel is over a new dawn has come and as you walk with me the light of my word will shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter in the name of Jesus. Let me declare, as many that has made themselves available for this meeting tonight, everything that you have lost, I declare by the mercies of God and by the power of resurrection, may it be restored unto you in the name of Jesus. May it be restored unto you in the name of Jesus. Pray for everybody with the instruments. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you mightily. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you mightily. May the hand of the Lord rest upon you mightily. In the name of Jesus Christ. We pray among the youth that we shake this land and this generation for God. May you be among them in the name of Jesus. I pray every sickness is hereby terminated in Jesus name every depression hereby ends in the name of Jesus I declare hope is restored to you in the name of Jesus power to live godly is released in the name of Jesus and together the kingdom of God advances through us in the name of Jesus as many that will be moving around tonight I declare the good hand of the Lord be upon you the peace of the Lord that passes all understanding be upon you. The glory of the Lord mantles your life and mantles this auditorium. 
and the blessed brethren of this church in the name of jesus christ we declare upon kingdom network and kingdom minded youth we go from glory to glory from strength to strength from wisdom to wisdom from power to power from grace to grace in the name of jesus christ thank you precious holy spirit thank you because jesus is alive thank you because we will forever celebrate the resurrection in jesus glorious matchless precious powerful magnificent magnanimous name we have prayed let somebody shout a living amen the new things that you have not seen before begin to happen in your life so the spirit of god tells me to tell you take note of events after now because something has changed something has moved and you will see his glory let's celebrate jesus hallelujah hallelujah god bless you in jesus name i believe that we have been edified i believe that we have learned and i believe that we will never be the same again